Hey writers, it's Renee Latulip with the Lyrical Language Lab where we get together to chat about rhyme meter and lyrical language. I have another meter tutorial for you, this time with trochaic meter and its variations. If you haven't already seen my tutorials on iambic and anapestic meter, you can find those at the link right above my head. And of course, stay tuned for the writing prompt at the end of the video. As always, let's begin with a quick recap of the four main meters. We have iambic meter, unstressed beat, followed by a stressed beat, da-da. We have anapestic meter. An anapest is two unstressed beats, followed by a stressed beat, da-da-da. Trochaic meter, which is one stressed beat, followed by an unstressed beat, da-da. And dactylic meter, and dactyls are one stressed beat, followed by two unstressed beats. Da, da, da. So the trochee is one stressed beat followed by one unstressed beat. Da, da. One unit is called a foot or one trochee, and when you put a series of those trochaic feet together, you get a line of trochaic meter. So if you put four of those together, da, 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 da you have trochaic tetrameter, as in love is holding something fragile. We've already learned that iambic and anapestic meters are rising meters because they go up at the end, ending on stressed beats. Da-da, da-da-da. Whereas trochaic meter and also dactylic uh, are falling meters because they end on unstressed beats. Da-da, da-da-da. So they fall at the end. If you are still on shaky ground with meter, I highly recommend first taking a look at my video, Top 5 Tips for Identifying Stressed Syllables, which again is at the link right above my head, and hopefully that will clear up some of the mystery for you. Now to help us see trochaic meter in action, I have this submission from Susan Roble. I've already scanned the meter, so see if you can follow along as I read. Chickens cluck to unborn eggs. Cranes ricochet on reedy legs. Snails deliver loving darts. Bower birds impress with art. And you, my little snuggle bug, how do you say love? Sage grouse puff their chests and dance. Bonobos favor full romance. Hooded seals balloons inflate. Penguins think rare rocks are great. And you, my little teddy bear, how do you say love? Courting mice begin to sing. Spiders wrap up food to bring. Fish build circles in the deep. Turtles gently stroke a cheek. And you, my little bunnykins, how do you say love? Isn't that lovely? And the meter is really consistent here. As you can see, there are four stressed beats in each line. So there are four trochees in every single line. So it's really, well, almost every single line. So it's very, very consistent. Uh, we also have a consistent rhyme scheme of AABB or rhyming couplets in the first four lines of each stanza. And then we have a break of two unrhymed lines in the last two lines of each stanza, which is the refrain. It becomes a lovely refrain. And you will notice as well that we have some variations here. In the first line of each refrain, Susan has added an unstressed beat with the and, and you, and you, my little snuggle bug. And she has also lopped off the final unstressed beat at the end of the second line of each refrain. Not to mention that she has also only put three stressed beats in that final line of the refrain. And these are all variations that are perfectly acceptable. As I read it, it sounded great, right? That's our goal. That's our the, the real arbiter of whether or not our meter is working. Does it sound good? Sure does. The important thing is with these variations is that they are consistent all the way through, and they are. Every single one of her refrains follows the same pattern. And so, as a reader, we have no problems going along with that and not stumbling and reading smoothly and fluidly. As I've often mentioned in these videos, we do have some leeway if we want to play with the unstressed 
beats in a line. What we really need to be more strict about are the stressed beats and the number of stressed beats in each line. But the unstressed beats give us some wiggle room. And another note about that is that I am's and trochees are very close cousins, right? An I am is da da, and a troche is da da. So it is very common to see iambic substitutions in trochaic meter and trochaic substitutions in iambic meter. And again, totally acceptable if it all flows well. That's our final test. In this case, this and really softens the line for us. If you'll notice, every single other line, well, every line in this entire thing, take a look all the way down, they all end on a stressed beat. So what Susan has done all the way through, another variation, is that she has taken off the last unstressed beat of a trochee. So all of these final feet are truncated. They're missing the last unstressed beat of the trochee, dada. Again, extremely common to do in trochaic meter. And because these lines are all truncated, the rhythm is quite hard. Chickens cluck to unborn eggs. So this little added unstressed beat kind of softens that line for us, gives us a breathing space, and so it works for that transition between this hard beat, this stressed beat art, and you. You might even say, you know, that this unstressed beat here is just the end of this trochee, this truncated trochee. Six of one, half dozen of the other, uh, and it all flows beautifully. You've probably noticed that I also highlighted uh, some other words in here that are other variations. Now, bowerbirds and bonobos in particular are in that class of multisyllable words that don't have a really pronounced secondary stress. Bowerbirds, bonobos. I am not really inclined to slow down enough to say bowerbirds impress with art. I get to that word and I say bowerbirds impressed with art. So I do admit I, st I stumbled on that the first time I read it. I read it several times, so now I'm trained. I've trained myself to say bowerbirds impressed with art. Does that mean she has to change it? No, not necessarily, but it's just something to be aware of that some of these words uh, don't have that really hard secondary stress. So they might be causes for a little stumble. And in fact, you can see that I stressed this, I scanned this, just as a regular line, bower birds impressed with art. Because she is using, uh, you know, birds as that secondary stress, and there's nothing wrong with that. Technically, it's fine. It's just not how I normally would say that word. I wouldn't give it that big of a stress. Now, bonobos, on the other hand, uh, is an interesting case because, as I would say, bower birds, I say bonobos. So I'm not really stressing. There's no secondary stress for me. Bonobos. Bonobos. I mean, it, there is, it's tiny, it's slight, right? Technically it's there, but it's really, really slight. It's not like a word like multitude or happenstance. That, you know, those, those secondary stresses are much more pronounced. Bonobos. Now up here, Susan used that slight but present secondary stress. The bonobos is a different case. Here, Susan did not opt to use that slight but present secondary stress, bonobos, because if she had, and, and you can see here, um, I scanned it differently, if she had, she would have two stressed beats together because favor, fe is stressed, and it would be bonobos, favor, full romance, and that would be a stumble. Uh, in this case, Instead, we have Bonobo's favor, full romance. So she is sneaking in the bows as an unstressed syllable. Hmm? Very clever. Does it work? Yes, I'm going to say yes, it does. These two words do give me a tiny bit of a stumble, a tiny bit of pause, but overall her meter is so on point. It's so consistent that I can absolutely live with these tiny variations. Uh, some variations make you stumble, some don't. You really wanna take a second look at the ones that do make you stumble. These are teeny tiny little stumbles. So I just wanna make Susan aware of those uh, as she goes along. I'm sure she's already aware of them. I have this feeling. <laughs>
Now there is another variation in the word ricochet that I find uh, less acceptable. It really does make me stumble because ricochet does have a more pronounced secondary stress. Ricochet, ricochet. Rick is the primary stress and shay is the secondary stress. And you can hear that. Ricochet, ricochet. I don't say ricochet like Bonobo. It's ricochet. It's really there. So cranes ricochet on reedy legs. What's happening here is that we have two stressed beats together. Cranes rick o And I was generous here in that I put shay as an unstressed beat. And if I do that, I have three unstressed beats in a row. Cranes ricochet on reedy legs. I would change this verb, definitely. And I'm not even really sure, do cranes ricochet? Is it really the best word anyways? I mean, it's a great word. But I'm just not sure that this is the right spot for it. So I think that um, Susan would do well to find a word that is unstressed stressed so that it fits in here a little bit better. So cranes, da da, on reedy legs. Because this is just a little too much of a variation uh, for me to let it pass. And it's in the second line. So um, we don't want our variations to come quite so soon in our writing. You know, give your reader some time to really get into your rhythm and figure out what you're doing before you start zapping them with some variations, okay? And honestly, this is the only word in this entire snippet that I would change. Uh, the rest is really terrific. Susan has excellent diction, lots of specific, interesting word choices and verbs. And so she's created a lot of engaging images. So brava to Susan and thank you so much for sending this in and letting me use it in this tutorial. Before I close, I wanted to quickly share some pages from this darling book called Love Is by Diane Adams, written in trochaic meter. Look at this cover, it is so cute. So let me just share with you just a couple of verses. Love is holding something fragile, tiny wings and downy head. Love is noisy midnight feedings, shoebox right beside the bed. It's peaceful sleeping, no more peeping, tucked in tightly head to toes. Love is waking up together, side by side and beak to nose. <laughs> I love this, it is so adorable. Uh, this was actually brought to my attention by Deborah Foster, and she had a question on it. It is trochaic meter, uh, but Deborah mentioned that she stumbled on the lines that start with its, and that is a variation. So let's just take a real quick look here. Uh, we have trochaic tetrameter. Love is holding something fragile. Tiny wings and downy head. So in these first two lines, uh, we have da 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 da. We have four full trochies because da, the author with fragile is keeping that last unstressed beat, fragile. But in the second line, she truncates that last foot, tiny wings and downy head. So we end on the stressed beat instead. And the author is very consistent with this pattern. Love is noisy midnight feedings falling meter, shoebox right beside the bed, truncated. With the lines that begin with its, however, she has added an unstressed beat, much like Susan did in her, um, her submission. She adds that unstressed beat at the beginning of the line. It's peaceful sleeping, no more peeping, but it's still tetrameter because she has not messed with the number of stressed beats in the line. It's peaceful, sleeping, no more peeping. And still we have the falling meter, tucked in tightly head to toes. And again, a truncated foot on that second line. Super consistent all the way through. And it bears repeating, the reason it works is because she has only played with the unstressed beats, leaving the number of stressed beats the same that she established in her very first stanza. There's four of them. Whether it ends on an unstressed beat or it doesn't end on an unstressed beat, even that, even her variations are very, very consistent. Consistency is always the key, always. That's our number one rule. 
and before the writing prompt, a little bit of extra homework, and that is to look at one of the most famous books written in trochaic meter, and that is Llama Llama Red Pajama. It's written in trochaic dimeter, so two trochaic feet in every line. Take a look at it, see if you can find the variations, and think about whether they work and why. And for your writing prompt, let's use Susan Robles' excellent submission as a mentor text, as a model, for your own stanzas where you have four lines of a specific trochaic meter. It can be tetrameter, it can be tr um, trimeter, whichever you like. And then you have a small refrain where there is some sort of variation. Feel free to post those in the comments below and I would love to read them. And that is pretty much all we need to know about trochaic meter. I hope you have found this tutorial helpful, and if you have, please do share it with your writer friends. If you haven't subscribed already, you might consider doing so by clicking the, the button below and then hitting this little bell for notifications. And otherwise, I'll see you back here soon. Happy writing. Bye-bye.